Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Haya Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life, and Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And together, God's people say, Hallelujah. Well, friends, we're continuing our study in the book of 1 Enoch, and today we are going to begin chapter 89. Now, this is a lengthy chapter. So I need to take a breath because I'm very excited about what's going to be presented this morning. You need to grab a cup of coffee or Coke or water, whatever it is that you drink that's relaxing to you. You need to find a comfortable place. You need to have a Bible in front of you. And you're going to need the book of First Enoch open in front of you. Now I have placed a link in the description box below so that you can follow along with us in the book of First Enoch both in this video and the videos before and to come. And so if you have your Bible, if you have your beverage of choice, if you are comfortable, please open your Bible to the book of Exodus, open up the book of 1 Enoch to chapter 89, and let's begin with verse 1. Now, I had encouraged you in the last video to read chapter 89, and I wish that I were there with you so that I could see what your thoughts might be on what you have read thus far. Did you see any parallels? Did you see anything in chapter 89 that might have struck a bell from the Bible for you? Or was this absolutely confusing? If it was confusing, by the end of this video, you will have the answer to all your questions. So let's begin in 1st Enoch chapter 89, keeping in mind that this was written before the flood. That is of utmost importance because that is going to verify that this is the Word of God. It may not be in the Bible, it may not be canon for us, but it is the Word of God given to Enoch as a prophetical picture of what is to come. Chapter 89, verse 1. Now, one of those four, this meaning the four angels that, that was speaking with Enoch, one of those four went to that white bull and instructed him in a secret. Without his being terrified, he was born a bull and became a man and built for himself a great vessel and dwelt thereon. And three bulls dwelt with him in that vessel and they were covered in. Now this would be Noah and his three sons and the vessel would be the ark. Verse two, and again, I raised mine eyes towards heaven and I saw a lofty roof with seven water torrents thereon. And those torrents flowed with much water into an enclosure. And I saw again, and behold, fountains were opened on the surface of the great enclosure. And that water began to swell and rise upon the surface. And I saw that enclosure till its surface was covered with water. This would be the flood. And the water, the darkness and mist increased upon it, and as I looked at the height of that water, that water had risen above the height of that enclosure and was streaming over that enclosure. And it stood upon the earth and all the cattle of that enclosure were gathered together until I saw how they sank and were swallowed up and perished in that water. This would be all the livestock, all the animals being killed in the flood that were not on the ark. Verse 6, but that vessel floated on the water, while all the oxen and elephants and camels and asses sank to the bottom with all the animals, so that I could no longer see them, and they were not able to escape, but perished and sank into the depths. And again, I saw in the vision till those water torrents were removed from that high roof, and the chasms of the earth were leveled up and other abysses were opened, then the water began to run down into these till the earth became visible. This would be the waters of the flood as they rescinded. But that vessel settled on the earth and the darkness retired and light appeared. Now this would be prophesying and speaking of the ark resting on Mount Ararat. Verse nine, but that white bull, Noah, which had become a man, came out of that vessel, the ark, and the three bulls with him, his sons, 
And one of those three was white, like that bull. And one of them was red as blood. And one black, and that white bull departed from them. Now there have been many who have questioned where the races of the earth have come from. It would appear to me that this is what this is speaking to. Verse 10, And they began to bring forth beasts of the fields and birds, so that there arose different generations, lions, tigers, wolves, dogs, hyenas, wild boars, foxes, squirrels, swine, falcons, vultures, kites, eagles, and ravens. And among them was born a white bull. And they began to bite one another. But that white bull, which was born amongst them, beget a wild ass and a white bull with it. And the wild asses multiplied. But that bull, which was born from him, beget a black wild boar and a white sheep. Now, this would seem to be talking about Abraham, Isaac, and Ishmael. Ishmael is possibly the black wild boar. The white sheep is Isaac. And the other white bull that it speaks of in verse 11 would be Abraham. Now, you're going to see this clarified in Scripture, so just bear with me. Now, the former beget many boars, but that sheep beget 12 sheep. Could this be the 12 patriarchs of Isaac, which later became the 12 tribes. Verse 13, when those 12 sheep had grown, they gave up one of them to the asses. Do you remember the 12 brothers, the sons of Isaac, they sold Joseph into slavery? Well, it says here the 12 sheep, when they had grown, gave up one of them to the asses. And those asses, again, gave up that sheep to the wolves. And that sheep grew up among the wolves. Joseph was sold into slavery and he grew up among the people in Pharaoh's kingdom because he was sold as a young boy. Verse 14, now the Lord brought the 11 sheep to live with it. Well, that's exactly what happened if you've read the story, if you're familiar with the story. The great famine hit, they came to Joseph to get food, not knowing that it was Joseph. Joseph revealed himself unto them. They all moved, including his father, to Egypt, and they lived there until the day that Joseph died. And so again, it says, the Lord brought the 11 sheep to live with it, Joseph, and to pasture with it among the wolves. Now, the wolves are picturesque of the Egyptians. And they multiplied, and they became many flocks of sheep. And the wolves, the Egyptians, began to fear them, and they oppressed them until they had destroyed their little ones. Now, in Exodus chapter 1, verse 9, 10, and 12, this is what it says. He said unto his people, this is Pharaoh speaking, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies, and they fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Verse 12, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved because of the children of Israel. So again, in 1 Enoch chapter 89, verse 15, it says the wolves, the Egyptians, began to fear them. Well, that's what we just read in the book of Exodus. And they oppressed them until they destroyed their little ones. Now in verse 9 and 16, it says again, he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. In verse 16, he says, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. And that's what Enoch is telling us here. They feared the people of Israel. They oppressed the people of Israel. And they destroyed their little ones. They cast the young into a river of much water. Well, in verse 22 of Exodus chapter 1, it says, Pharaoh charged all his people, saying, Every son that is born ye shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. Now remember, Enoch is writing this before the flood. This is in the time of Joseph, long after the flood. And yet he is writing it so precisely and the Bible records it with even such precision that it could only be God that would tell Enoch such things. Well, let's continue in verse 16 of 1 Enoch chapter 89. He says, You should cast their young into a river of much water, 
But those sheep began to cry aloud on account of their little ones and to complain unto the Lord. Well, in Exodus chapter 2, verse 23, it says, It came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died. And the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage. Back to First Enoch, verse 16. A sheep which had been saved from the wolves fled and escaped to the wild asses. This would be speaking of Moses. And I saw the sheep, the people of Israel, how they lamented and cried. And they besought the Lord with all their might, till that the Lord of the sheep descended at the voice of the sheep from a lofty abode and came to them and pastured them. And he called that sheep Moses, which had escaped the wolves, the Egyptians, and spake with it concerning the wolves that it should admonish them not to touch the sheep. And the sheep went to the wolves, the Egyptians, according to the word of the Lord, which is recorded in Exodus chapter 3, verses 7 through 10, where God tells Moses to go to Pharaoh and tell him to let my people go. And another sheep met it and went with us. This would be speaking of Aaron. Aaron Moses wouldn't go by himself because of his speech impediment. So Aaron was assigned by God to go with Moses so that he could speak on behalf of Moses, who was speaking on behalf of the Lord. And the two went and entered together into the assembly of those wolves and spake with them and admonished them not to touch the sheep from henceforth or to let my people go, let my people out of bondage, quit oppressing them. Verse 19, and thereupon I saw the wolves, the Egyptians, and how they oppressed the sheep, the children of Israel, exceedingly with all their power. And the sheep cried aloud. Now, when it says they oppressed the sheep exceedingly with all their power, in Exodus chapter 5, verse 17, he says unto the children of Israel, Pharaoh, this is, he says, you are idle, you are idle. Therefore, you say, let us go and do sacrifice to the Lord. Well, in verses 6 through 9, he says, Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers saying, you shall no more give the people straw to make brick as you did before. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. And as for the tell of the bricks, which they did make heretofore, you shall lay this upon them. You shall not diminish aught thereof, for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, let us go and sacrifice to our God. So basically Pharaoh is saying, look, if you have time to sacrifice, if you have time to cry unto your Lord, then you've got time to do what my people are doing for you to make your jobs easier. So I'm going to take away that extra time that you have, and I'm going to assign you to do what my people were doing, and yet your quota is not going to diminish any at all. You're still expected to meet the same quota, but you're going to have twice the amount of work. And that's what Enoch says here in verse 19. He says, they oppressed the sheep exceedingly with all their power. They held nothing back. And so the sheep cried aloud. And we see that in Exodus chapter 5, verse 20 and 21, when it says, The people of Israel met Moses and Aaron, who stood in the way as they came forth from Pharaoh. And they said unto Moses and Aaron, The Lord look upon you and judge, because you have made our sever to be abhorred in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of his servants to put a sword in their hand to slay us. So basically they're saying, look, our work is harder now than when you arrived. If you came on behalf of God, why are many of us dying under this oppression? We would rather you leave and we go back to being slaves because you're making our lives much too difficult. Well, back to verse 20 of chapter 89, it says, The Lord came to the sheep and they began to smite those wolves and the wolves began to make lamentation. But the sheep became quiet and forthwith ceased to cry out. Now, this isn't recorded in the Bible. The only indication that we have of such a slaying would be that of Moses, and that's the reason that he left Egypt to begin with and went out into the wilderness for 40 years. But it appears here from the book of First Enoch that the people themselves began to lash out and fight back. And, and so there was somewhat of a war among the Egyptian people, and maybe this hardened their hearts even more to let them go. But then it gets very interesting. Notice verse 21. I saw the sheep 
till they departed from amongst the wolves. This would be the great exodus told us in chapter 12. It says the eyes of the wolves, the Egyptians, were blinded, and those wolves departed in pursuit of the sheep with all their power. So they have been set free out from their bondage, but then once they realize that they have to now do the work that the children of Israel were doing, they go after them with all their power. And the Lord of the sheep went with them as their leader, and all his sheep followed him. And his face was dazzling and glorious and terrible to behold. But the wolves, the Egyptians, began to pursue those sheep till they reached a sea of water. Now you'll remember this from Exodus chapter 14 because the people come to the water. Moses has to strike the water. There has to be a great divide and the people have to pass through. And Pharaoh and his army follow them all the way to the water's edge. Verse 24 of chapter 89. And the sea was divided. And the water stood on this side and on that before their face. And their Lord led them and placed himself between them and and the wolves. And that's exactly what takes place in scripture, friends. Verse 25, and as those wolves, again, the Egyptians, did not yet see the sheep, they proceeded into the midst of that sea. And the wolves followed the sheep, and those wolves ran after them into that sea. And when they saw the Lord of the sheep, they turned to flee before his face. But that sea gathered itself together and became as it had been created. And the water swelled and rose till it covered those wolves. That's found in Exodus chapter 14 and verse 28. And Enoch says, I saw till all the wolves, the Egyptians, who pursued those sheep, perished and were drowned. But the sheep, the people of Israel, escaped from that water and went forth into a wilderness where there was no water and no grass. And they began to open their eyes and to see. And I saw the Lord of the sheep pasturing them and giving them water and grass and that sheep going and leading them. Now we know when the people crossed the sea, we know that they entered into the wilderness. We know that they began to murmur because they no longer had the food of Egypt to eat. God provides them manna and water from a rock and Moses is leading them. And that's exactly what verse 28 just told us. In verse 29, it says that sheep, being Moses, ascended to the summit of that lofty rock, which would be Mount Sinai, found in Exodus chapter 19, verse 3. And it says the Lord of the sheep sent it to them. And after that, I saw the Lord of the sheep who stood before them, and his appearance was great and terrible and majestic. And all those sheep saw him, and they were afraid before his face. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 16, it says, It came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of a trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. And that's what Enoch says. He says they were afraid before his face. Verse 31 of chapter 89, And they all feared and trembled because of the Lord. And they cried to that sheep, being Moses, with them, which was amongst them, we are not able to stand before our Lord or to behold his face. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 18 and 19, it says, All the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, Speak thou with us and we will hear. But let not God speak with us, lest we die. And what do they say in the book of Enoch? We are not able to stand before our Lord or to behold him. He is too majestic. He is too mighty. He is too terrible. He is too fearful. Verse 32, And that sheep, Moses, which led them again, ascended to the summit of that rock, Mount Sinai. But the sheep, the people of Israel, began to be blinded and to wander from the way which he had showed them. But that sheep knew not thereof. So Moses didn't know what was going on below the mountain. And what were they doing below the mountain? They were building a golden calf to worship. So Moses is having a divine experience with the Lord God Almighty atop the mountain. And yet the people are so fickle 
They are so wishy-washy that before Moses can even descend the mountain to tell them what the Lord has told him, they are already corrupting themselves by building false idols, which obviously they learned from Egypt, and now they're worshiping this golden calf. Verse 33, the Lord of the sheep, which was wrathful exceedingly against them, and that sheep, Moses discovered it as well, went down from the summit of the rock, Mount Sinai, and came to the sheep, the people of Israel, and found the greatest part of them blinded and fallen away. You can read about this in Exodus chapter 32, verses 1 through 4. And when they saw it, they feared and trembled at its presence and desired to return to their folds. When Moses came off the mount, he had to hide his face because the glory of the Lord shone so real upon him. And that's what this is saying. They feared and trembled at Moses' presence and desired to return to their folds. And I saw in this vision till that sheep, Moses, became a man and built a house for the Lord. That would be the tabernacle of the sheep and placed all the sheep in that house. And I saw till this sheep, which had met that sheep, which led them, fell asleep. And I saw till all the great sheep perished and little ones arose in their place and they came to a pasture and approached a stream of water. Then that sheep, their leader, which had become a man, withdrew from them and fell asleep. Moses dies, Exodus chapter 34, verses 5 and 8. And all the sheep sought it and cried over it with great crying. And I'm sorry, that would be Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 5 and 8, which says, So Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab, according to the word of the Lord. Verse 8, and the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab. Thirty days they wept. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And back to verse 38 in chapter 89 of 1 Enoch, it says, Then that sheep, Moses, their leader, which had become a man, withdrew from them and fell asleep. And all the people of Israel, the sheep, sought it and cried over it with great crying. Verse 39, and I saw till they left off crying for that sheep, Moses, and crossed that stream of water, and there arose the two sheep as leaders in the place of those which had led them and fallen asleep. Now, when it says two sheep here, we know one of this to be Joshua. I don't know who the second one is, possibly Caleb. And when it says two sheep as leaders in the place of those which had led them and fallen asleep. This would obviously be Moses and Aaron, but this would also be the other leaders. Do you remember back in Exodus chapter 18 where Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, comes to him and says this? In verse 21, he says, Moreover, you will provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. What he's trying to tell Moses is you're trying to do everything by yourself. Break this down, assign leadership to other people that they can handle the lesser of important problems and you can deal with the more grave and severe problems. Well, that's what this is telling us here. Moses and Aaron died and of course all the other leaders died. Back to verse 40 in chapter 89, it says, I saw till the sheep, which are the children of Israel, came to a goodly place. This would be the promised land and a pleasant and glorious land. And I saw till those sheep were satisfied and that house stood amongst them in the pleasant land. And sometimes their eyes were open and sometimes blinded till another sheep arose and led them and brought them all back and their eyes were open. Now, if you've ever read the book of Judges, you know that the people would repent before the Lord. They would serve him for a time. Then they would go back to worshiping pagan gods. Then God would smite them. Then they would repent, and this process would repeat over and over. And that's what we're being told in verse 41 here. Sometimes their eyes were open. They were living honorably before God. And sometimes their eyes were blinded. They were worshiping pagan gods till another sheep arose and led them and brought them all back and their eyes were opened. Now, I don't know who this is speaking of specifically here. There's a lot of conjectures or speculations that we can make, but I think it will become clearer as we progress into the chapter. 
Verse 42, the dogs and the foxes and the wild boars began to devour those sheep till the Lord of the sheep raised up another sheep, a ram from their midst, which led them. I believe that this is Saul, King Saul. Because again, the people are being oppressed and the reason they're being oppressed is because they're worshiping pagan gods and they're living like the pagan nations around them. And so God raises up this ram, King Saul, and it says in verse 43, that ram began to butt on either side of those dogs, foxes, and wild boars till he had destroyed them all. And that sheep whose eyes were opened saw that ram, which was amongst the sheep, until it forsook its glory and began to butt those sheep and trampled upon them and behaved itself unseemly. Now, when the people asked for a king, God granted them their wish. But he said, this king that you have asked for will become your oppressor. And yet the people still cried out for an earthly king when God wanted to be their king. But God complied to the wishes of the people. And what Enoch is telling us here is, is what God said is exactly what happened. Saul, King Saul, began to oppress the people. In verse 45, it says, The Lord of the sheep, the children of Israel, sent the lamb. Now, King Saul is the ram. David is the lamb. And it says he sent the lamb to another lamb and raised it to being a ram and leader of the sheep instead of that ram, which had forsaken its glory. Now, the first lamb would seem to be Samuel, who was a prophet of the Lord, and he goes to another lamb, which would be David, the chosen of the Lord, and he raises David to being a ram, a king, and leader of the sheep, the people of Israel, instead of that ram, King Saul, which had forsaken its glory. Verse 46, and it went to it and spake to it alone, and it raised it to being a ram, and made it the prince and leader of the sheep. But during all these things, those dogs oppressed the sheep. The people were still under oppression. And the first ram, King Saul, pursued that second ram. You'll read about this in 1 Samuel chapter 23, verse 25. It goes on and says, the second ram, which is David, arose and fled before the first ram, which is King Saul. And I saw till those dogs pulled down the first ram. They killed King Saul. And that second ram, David, arose and led the little sheep, the children of Israel. And those sheep grew and multiplied. But all the dogs and foxes and wild boars, the oppressors of the people of Israel, feared and fled before it. And that ram, King David, butted and killed those wild beasts, and those wild beasts had no longer any power among the sheep and robbed them no more of aught. That's why King David is heralded as the greatest king that ever lived, because not only was he a king, but he was a general of his armies. David knew and understood war. And so he stops the oppression of the people of Israel. And they began to live in a state of prosperity. It continues that Ram, King David, begat many sheep and fell asleep. So David has children and then he dies. And one of those little sheep, which would be Solomon, became Ram or king in its stead and became prince and leader of those sheep. And that house became great and broad, the house of David. And it was built for those sheep. And a tower lofty and great was built on the house for the Lord of the sheep. And that house was low, but the tower was elevated and lofty. And the Lord of the sheep stood on that tower, and they offered a full table before him. This would appear to be Solomon's grand and glorious temple. And again I saw those sheep, that they again erred and went many ways and forsook that their house. They forsook the way of the Lord over time. And the Lord of the sheep called some from amongst the sheep and sent them to the sheep, but the sheep began to slay them. This would be the prophets. In Luke chapter 20, Jesus speaks of this through a parable or a story. And this is what he says, A certain man planted a vineyard and led it forth to husbandmen. And he went into a far country for a long time. 
And at that season, he sent a servant or a prophet to the husbandmen or the people of Israel that they should give him of the fruit of the vineyard. But the husbandmen beat him and sent him away empty. They don't want to hear what the prophets have to say. So they beat the prophets. Again, he sent another servant or prophet and they beat him also and entreated him shamefully and sent him away empty. And again, he sent a third and they wounded him also and cast him out. Then said the Lord of the vineyard, what shall I do? I will send my beloved son. This would be Jesus. It may be that they will reverence him when they see him. But when the husbandmen, these people of Israel saw him, they reasoned among themselves saying, this is the heir. Come, let us kill him and the inheritance will be ours. So they cast him out of the vineyard and they killed him. What therefore shall the Lord of the vineyard do unto them? He shall come and destroy these husbandmen and shall give the vineyard to others. Now Jesus is speaking here of his own life and death. And yet Enoch is telling us about it some 4,000 plus years before. In verse 52, Enoch continues, One of them was saved and was not slain. Now this would be referring to Elijah. And you can read about this in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11. It says, It sped away and cried aloud over the sheep, and they sought to slay it. But the Lord of the sheep saved it from the sheep and brought it up to me and caused it to dwell there. Again, this would be Elijah being swept away to heaven on the chariots of fire. Verse 53, many other sheep he sent to those sheep to testify unto them and to lament over them. Now in Hebrews chapter 11, you can read about these different prophets and spokesmen of the Lord who were sent unto the people and yet they were killed, they were persecuted, and they were ostracized because the people did not want to hear the message of God. He says in verse 54, After that I saw that when they forsook the house of the Lord and his tower, they fell away entirely, and their eyes were blinded. And I saw the Lord of the sheep, how he wrought much slaughter amongst them in their herds, until those sheep invited that slaughter and betrayed his place. And he gave them over into the hands of the lions and tigers. Once again, Yahweh delivers them into the hand of the oppressors and the wolves and hyenas and into the hand of the foxes and to all the wild beasts. And those wild beasts began to tear in pieces those sheep. And I saw that he forsook that their house and their tower and gave them all into the hand of the lions to tear and devour them into the hand of all the wild beasts. And I began to cry aloud with all my power and to appeal to the Lord of the sheep and to represent to him in regard to the sheep that they were devoured by all the wild beasts. But he remained unmoved, though he saw it and rejoiced that they were devoured and swallowed and robbed and left them to be devoured in the hand of all the beasts. This would seem to be speaking of the 12 tribes being divided. Verse 59 says, he called 70 shepherds and cast those sheep to them that they might pasture them. And he spake to the shepherds and their companions, let each individual of you pasture the sheep henceforward and everything that I shall command you that do ye. And I will deliver them over unto you duly numbered and tell you which of them are to be destroyed and them shall you destroy. And he gave over unto them those sheep. And he called another and spake unto him and said, Observe and mark everything that the shepherds will do to those sheep. For they will destroy more of them than I have commanded them. And every excess and the destruction which will be wrought through the shepherds record namely how many they destroy according to my command and how many according to their own caprice. Record against every individual shepherd all the destruction he effects and read out before me by number how many they destroy and how many they deliver over for destruction that I may have this as a testimony against them and know every deed of the shepherds that I may comprehend and see what they do, whether or not they abide by my command, which I have commanded them. So basically God is saying, I'm going to appoint to you these shepherds and I want them to lead my people. 
but they are going to betray what I have told them and they're going to follow their own hearts and their own desires for whatever reasons and they're going to become false leaders to my people. Jesus said it best, the blind are going to lead the blind. Well, in Ezekiel chapter 34, verses one through 10, this is what the Bible says. And the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds. Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat and you clothe yourselves with the wool. You kill them that are fed, but you feed not the flock. The diseased have you not strengthened. Neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. Neither have you sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have you ruled over them. And they were scattered because there is no shepherd. And they became meat to all the beasts of the field when they were scattered. My sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every high hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth and none did search or seek after them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely because my flock became a prey and my flock became meat to every beast of the field, because there was no shepherd, neither did my shepherds search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, O ye shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my flock at their hand, and I will cause them to cease from feeding the flock. Neither shall the shepherds feed themselves any more, for I will deliver my flock from their mouth, that they may not be meat for them. And so God is not happy with the shepherds, and here Enoch sees this, like we have said, some 4,000 years before, and he sees it with great and precise detail. Verse 64, But they shall not know it. Thou shalt not declare it to them, nor admonish them, but only record against each individual all the destruction which the shepherds effect each in his time, and lay it all before me. And I saw till those shepherds pastured in their season, and they began to slay and destroy more than they were bidden. And they delivered those sheep into the hand of the lions. And the lions and tigers, or the pagan nations, eat and devoured the greater part of those sheep, or the people of Israel. And the wild boars eat along with them. And they burnt that tower and demolished that house. This would be the destruction of the temple. And I became exceedingly sorrowful over that tower because that house of the sheep was demolished. And afterwards, I was unable to see if those sheep entered that house. And the shepherds and their associates delivered over those sheep to all the wild beasts to devour them. And each one of them received in his time a definite number. It was written by the other in a book how many each of them destroyed of them. And each one slew and destroyed many more than was prescribed. And I began to weep and lament on account of those sheep. And thus in the vision, I saw that one who wrote how he wrote down every one that was destroyed by those shepherds day by day and carried up and laid down and showed actually the whole book of the Lord of the sheep, even everything that they had done and all that each one of them had made away with, and all that they had given over to destruction. So Enoch is telling us that God is keeping a record of each individual life, because each individual life is very important. And as we were told in the book of Ezekiel, each of these lives are going to be on the hands of these shepherds who misled them and failed to do for them what God had commanded the shepherds to do for the people of Israel. In verse 71, he says, The book was read before the Lord of the sheep. And he took the book from his hand, and he read it and sealed it and laid it down. And forthwith I saw how the shepherds pastured for twelve hours. And behold, three of those sheep turned back and came and entered and began to build up all that had fallen down of that house. But the wild boars tried to hinder them, but they were not able. Now this would seem to be speaking of the rebuilding of the temple. 
and the walls of Jerusalem. And we see this through the life of Nehemiah, Zerubbabel. And if it's speaking of the third temple, we haven't seen that yet because that's still yet to be rebuilt. Verse 73, they began again to build as before and they reared up that tower and it was named the high tower and they began again to place a table before the tower but all the bread on it was polluted and not pure and as touching all this, the eyes of those sheep were blinded so that they saw not and the eyes of their shepherds likewise and they delivered them in large numbers to their shepherds for destruction and they trampled the sheep with their feet and devoured them. And the Lord of the sheep remained unmoved till all the sheep were dispersed over the field and mingled with the beasts. And the shepherds did not save them out of the hands of the beasts. Again, this would be the separation of the 12 tribes of Israel. 10 went north, two went south. And when Jesus arrives, he says, I came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And this is what he's speaking of. If you would like to understand that better, Look through our YouTube page because I have done an in-depth video on that topic. Verse 76, this one who wrote the book carried it up and showed it and read it before the Lord of the sheep and implored him on their account and besought him on their account as he showed him all the doings of the shepherds. And he gave testimony before him against all the shepherds. And he took the actual book and laid it down beside him and departed. Well, friends, that's going to bring us to the end of chapter 89, and I hope that that was as enlightening for you as it was for me. I hope it was confirming to you in the writing of the book of Enoch. And if you haven't been with us this far, and this is the first video that you've watched, I hope that you go back and you watch the remainder, because so far the book of Enoch has been filled with many, many surprises. Well, I realize this has been a lengthy video, friends. I pray that it has kept you on the edge of your seat. With that being said, we'll end our time together today. So as he wills, and until next time, friends, I love you, and I'll see you on the next video.